guarantee yourself those body breaks by being very persistent. That's all I can say in this particular video. Hey everyone, this is Corona once again, back with another video for Mazda Underworld Iceborne. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about my personal approach as to how I break body parts on the Safi Jiva itself. Literally in this video, all I'm going to be talking about is my personal approach in breaking Safi Jiva body parts. Surprisingly enough, not a lot of people do this when it comes to the Safi Jiva itself, even if they were trying to break body parts on the Safi Jiva itself with Part Breaker 3. So, for the most part in this video, I'm gonna give you my personal approach as to how I break the body parts of the Safi Jiva itself to the point that even at times you might not even need Part Breaker 3 in order to break certain body parts on the Safi Jiva itself. So let's go ahead and talk about my approach in breaking Safi Jiva body parts. Now when it comes to my personal approach in breaking Safi Jiva body parts, it's actually relatively simple. All I actually do is just focus on one body part at a time until they break and then I move on to the next one. By focusing on one body part at a time, I'm guaranteeing myself that one body part break on the Safi Jiva Siege itself. Now alongside being focused, I'm very persistent. And what I mean by this is no matter how many times Safi Jiva moves around, no matter how many times Safi Jiva attacks me or anything like that, I will always focus on one body part at a time. I'm not going to move on to the next body part until I have broken the one I am focusing on. By doing this, I'm guaranteeing myself a much higher reward level because I'm guaranteeing that body part break on the Safi Jiva itself even if I don't break the other body parts instantly. Now this approach might seem relatively simple for the most part in the way I describe it, but surprisingly enough, not a lot of people do this. A lot of the times you will see videos about builds in order to break Safi Jiva's body parts, but what they don't talk about is how you actually approach it. Yes, you can go ahead and have the best part breaker build for the Safi Jiva Siege Hunt, but if you're approaching it in such an erratic way where you're spreading yourselves too thin, then you're not really gonna guarantee that body part break even if you have part breaker 3 on. By focusing solely on one body part at a time until they break and then moving on to the next one and doing the exact same thing, what you're doing is you're guaranteeing yourself at least one body part break on the Safi Jiva itself. Now, when it comes to whatever weapon type they use, that is going to be dependent on yourselves. If you're using slashing damage weapons, I would say focus on the forelegs and the tail. If you're using something like the greatsword, definitely focus on the forelegs because the forelegs get the most damage out of severing base weapons. So longsword, greatswords, charge blades and whatnot. If you're using something like blunt weapons, so the hammer and hunting horn, go for the hind legs because the hind legs are weakest against blunt damage. If you're using any long range weapons, focus on the wings because the wings themselves are easily approached by the long range weapons, so bow guns and the bow itself. If you're wanting to go ahead and break the back of the Safi Jiva itself, do that during the second phase where you can go ahead and mount the monster using the ledges, or you can go ahead and bring an insect glaive and continuously vault towards the Safi Jiva itself until you go ahead and mount it on the Safi Jiva's back and you hit the back of the Safi Jiva itself using the mount attack. So as you can see, depending on the weapon type that you use, you will do much better damage on certain areas on the Safi Jiva itself. But at the end of the day, the important thing here is you need to focus on one part of the Safi Jiva at a time before moving on to the next one. By focusing on one part of the body until it breaks, you're guaranteeing yourself higher reward levels on the Safi Jiva itself. So even though it sounds relatively simple in my approach as to how I go about the Safi Jiva Siege, it's actually very effective. So depending on the situation, whatever weapon I'm using, I'm gonna use that weapon and then I'm gonna focus on a specific body part on the Safi Jiva itself until it breaks. When it comes to me using the long sword or the switch axe, I always focus on the tail because the tail itself can be easily severed by slashing weapons and the longsword and the switch axe are actually very quick in their movement in comparison to something like the greatsword and for the most part, I've actually managed to sever the tail multiple times even without the part breaker 3 skill. So, depending on your approach, it's not just gonna be the weapons that are gonna be effective as well as the part breaker 3, it has to be your approach as well. Focus, persistence, in tandem with the weapon type that you're using as well as Part Breaker 3 will almost always guarantee you part breaks on the Safi Jiva Siege Hunt. But that is pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you've taken something away from this particular video in getting an idea as to how to approach the Safi Jiva Siege Hunt rather than just relying 
solely on the build that you're carrying when you're doing the actual siege hunt itself. Yes, it's a very basic video at the end of the day and I was just trying to give you an idea as to how I approach things because there's a lot of build videos out there that you can use against Safajiva but if you have the right build but you don't have the right approach to the Safajiva siege hunt at the end of the day, all you're doing is you're adding more DPS to yourself and you're not really going to be guaranteeing yourself those part breaks. So hopefully in this video, I've given you an idea as to how to guarantee yourself those part breaks for the Safajiva Siege Hunt, giving you better reward levels at the end of the day. Now that is pretty much it for me for this video. If you enjoyed these videos, please feel free to leave a like on the video itself as well as subscribe to the channel so you can go ahead and catch up on any future Monster Hunter content that I might be doing as well as any other games that I might be playing in future. Until then, I hope you enjoyed this video, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time, onward and upward.